Free is our favorite word. Like free samples. Yum. Joy. Thank you. At Morgan & Morgan, our fee is free. You don't pay anything unless we win your case. True samples? Injured? Call Morgan & Morgan. Forthepeople.com. Talking with SEC Mike, man of the hour. How dare you? <laughs> How dare you? Hey, I'm not even kidding, Nick. When I put this out there, I'm going on vacation next week to Kentucky. I'm going to the great state of Kentucky, going on the bourbon trail. Oh. And I'm not even releasing the information of where I'll be. I'll, I'll post pictures the day after because I don't want people to know. I'm spending like three or four days up there. I'm, some people are, are threatening me online, which it's all in good fun. But right. if I die, there's some prime suspects on Twitter. Well, Vince Merrow, he also saw your remarks <laughs> on Paul Feinbaum. He was not very happy with you. Uh, how, how, wh why, why are you so negative on Will Evans compared to maybe some of other people around the SEC? Well, I think a lot of it, and I've heard Matt Jones even say Joe Burrow comparison. And I, I just think that's a really poor comparison because when you got Joe Burrow, you had Jamar Chase, you had Justin Jefferson, you had high, uh, Clyde Edwards Alaire, the Clyde today, uh, Terrence Marshall. They had Thaddeus Moss, the tight end. I mean, I'm naming all these guys. These guys are all in the NFL. Mm -hmm. Is, does Kentucky right now have NFL pieces all around Will Levis? I mean, they've got Chris Rodriguez will be in the NFL. Will Robinson be there? You know, I think that's the hope. I think that's why he's coming to Kentucky. But you're talking one piece compared to five or six elite. And it also doesn't work because of Joe Brady coming in there. And that, that to me, was the key to that LSU. And I think Kentucky, if they had that in Liam Cohen, they just lost it. And I've talked to people that do these coach analysis. Dave Bartu, my man, CFB Matrix, mm -hmm. look him up. He's entertaining as hell. He's got Rich Scangarello as the 13th best play caller in the SEC. So you put all these pieces together. Again, it's not me sitting here bashing with mm -hmm. People think I hate with But I watched him play last season, and I think I thought he was a good player. But he left a lot to be desired. And, and right now, I think I've got him as the sixth best quarterback, maybe even seventh, sixth or seventh best quarterback in the SEC. And really, I think that says more about the state of the SEC and their quarterbacks, because we're, we're going through guys like Spencer Rattler and Bryce Young, of course, reigning Heisman Trophy winner. I love KJ Jefferson, Hannon Hooker, and Will Rogers, who Kentucky fans know all about him. They got to play him every year. He had a hell of a year. So it's not. I'm just trying to trash Will Levis. I just, that's where I put him, man. He went six weeks without completing a pass 20 yards down the field. And you're telling me he's going to be the first overall pick in the upcoming NFL draft? I don't buy him. Well, I would point out that he also did average eight yards attempt. He, he did orchestrate a game-winning drive against Iowa, top 10 defense in the country. Uh, he, he's put a lot on tape. And guys like Anthony Richardson, they also get said, hey, they've got a lot of, He's got all the right tools. He's got the tools to be an NFL quarterback. But uh, Levis, it seems like he doesn't get as much benefit of the doubt. I, maybe You know what I think it might be? Just because we've seen him. We've seen the turnovers. We've seen. And with Anthony Richardson, what brief we have seen has been amazing. And I'm talking before he got injured. So there is something to that to where it's a little bit of a projection and we kind of imagine what these players can be. Whereas, you know, it's almost like a Kentucky fans will know this probably analogy, draft prospects in basketball. Sometimes they come out, you know, you, you want to go straight when you could go to high school or the NBA or freshman year. There was a number of guys that would come back and actually hurt their stock. And I think it's because it's evaluation, it's, it's film. They struggle in college, what are they going to do in the NBA? So maybe there's a little bit of that in there. But again, uh, again, I'm not sitting here trying to bash Will Levis. This is my honest opinion of, of where they rank. Why do you hate Kentucky? You know, I don't understand. Nick's asking these questions. He's literally smiling the whole time, you know? When he first said, hey, can we meet with you? I was like, is it a dark alley? Because we're not doing it. <laughs> I, I'm, I, I, so I am curious, though. Just generally speaking, because you're, you're pointing out what some Kentucky fans don't want to hear, but there are there are some legit criticisms, and I think Will would even admit those. But looking big picture at Kentucky, despite what they lost, what do you what do you see as the floor? What do you see as the ceiling for Kentucky this fall? I mean, I think we did a show. If everything breaks right, yeah, we did an hour long on Kentucky. <laughs> Eleven and one, I think, is the ceiling. Like they could realistically get there. I really think anybody on their schedule, with the exception of Georgia. And if had they faced Georgia early in the year, 
Mm -hmm. I don't care where the game's played. I think they could potentially knock them off. But with everything Georgia is having to replace, I think by the tail end of the season, they'll have that going. Mm -hmm. Hell, I had Stetson Bennett 10th in, uh, in my SEC quarterback rankings. And the analogy I use, you know, we can't do trades in college football. But would Mark Stoops pick up the phone and trade Will Levis for Stetson Bennett? Hell no, he wouldn't. And I'm sorry, I don't know if I'm allowed to curse Oh, here, you're but, by all means. <laughs> but, yeah, so that's the ceiling. 11-1. and one, They could be second in the SEC East. And I, I put that out there also to Vince Morrow. Who, why is, it, why is an assistant coach tweeting me? Like, what, doesn't he got better things? That's Vince. Like, I know, but that, that's struggling. <laughs> he's tweeting during – he's subtweeting – I wouldn't Cruise. say trouble. It's, pa- I, it's passion, I, I, right? Yeah. I mean, it, he's I saying it up for his guys. I, I will tell you the one thing I like about Vince is there's a whole bunch of coaches that don't say shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And he does speak his mind. He does back up his boys. So I find a lot of respect in that. It is unusual, mm-hmm. but I wish I wish more coaches would be authentic. You know? How confident are you that the balls are going to beat the Wildcats oh, this we're year? Going I, I don't even know. Are we? Not just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, optimistically. I think there are, you know, your Georgia, Alabama. Those those games are just too tough. You know, we know that. But it's these toss-up games that we're going to have along the season. The Kentucky, maybe South Carolina. I just think when you look at the SEC East, it's Georgia, and then there's like four or five teams that you can make the case that they're going to be the second best team. You know, if you like Tennessee, well, you can make the case. If you're a Kentucky fan, you're going to make the case. You know, and I think at the end of the season, they all got to play each other. We're gonna, it, it's all gonna come out in the fold. But I think it's all come down to scheduling, and that's why I've got Kentucky a little higher than Mike does because he, he just hates them. I don't know what that is. That's SEC Mike on Twitter. <laughs> but I like them because of the scheduling. I, I just think that they're gonna, even if they beat or if Tennessee beats Kentucky, I can see a scenario where Kentucky comes out higher in the SEC ranks oh, yeah, than absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yes, and that's the point I was trying to make to Vince. I mean, two through five, you could talk me anywhere. You could talk me Kentucky, two, but obviously I'm picking them five. So, hey, it is what it is, but it, it, it's because there's a thin separation. Now, the biggest issue I think you can have with that is South Carolina. I do think South Carolina's on the rise, but Kentucky is own South Carolina. We, we got to hear, you guys got to hear every offseason how oh, yeah. South Carolina's going to surpass you. So, hey, I get why Kentucky fans want to troll me for that one, but... I just, I think going down to Florida, week two, I think that's being overlooked. I think that that's going to be the season for the Florida Gators. In that heat, in that humidity, they're probably going to lose right out the gate to Utah, but I didn't realize how good Utah was. My buddy Brett Sianca picked six previews. He's got Utah in the playoff, and he did that two years ago. They finished fifth in the country, so he knows what he's talking about. I, th- I could certainly see a scenario where Utah beats Florida. So now that's even more pressure, I think, on Florida to turn the season around, beat Kentucky. That's why Dan Mullen's gone because yeah. he lost to Kentucky yeah. twice. So I just don't think I, – I think Florida's got a better roster. And we've made this argument on our show. He agrees with me, but we respect Mark Stoops to have his troops ready to go week two, that's whereas it. Billy Napier may not. I'm, th- I'm, yeah. I'm going out on a limb with that one for sure. But I think that – it's almost like last year with Missouri. That was a critical game for Kentucky and for Missouri. Missouri went downhill after that. Kentucky went up. I think that could be the same thing with uh, Florida, Kentucky. Oh, the the Florida game, that Tennessee game, is going to come down a lot to Kentucky's football season. So you know, the, how Kentucky performs against those rivals will will dictate it all. We'll find out if you're right or wrong. That's at SEC Mike on Twitter. <laughs> if you want to send your hate his way, appreciate y'all at that SEC podcast.